Well, this is the second part of the video that my really bad recording on this Testo 557S before. I'm going to delete that vehicle, uh, vehicle, that video because it was really bad. And uh, since I don't do retakes and I don't do editing, that video just got to go away. But we had the problem where when I had the hose hooked up to the low side, out of the two pressures of high side and low side, the low side lost 100% of its pressure. So I'm trying to determine why. So I went through yesterday, and as you can see, it's been 16 hours and 59 minutes since I pressurized this up. It still has pressure. Both of these gauges are closed right now. So let's go into the other measurement system of the high and low side as if you were going to take pressure reading. So let's go uh, menu. And oh, it gives me a return to measurement or abort. Okay, um, well, we know where the measurement is. Let's see, let's return to menu. Okay, so if I say stop there, the only difference is, is plus or minus and minus uh, nine. Okay, so we're going to abort this test and we're just going to go into taking the measurements on both sides. Let's get uh, up, up again. Superheat subcooling, your regular test uh, testing mode for high side, low side. Let's open that up. And we are at 469, 470. So the low side has held. So for some reason, this brand new hose, when this brand new hose was hooked up, this side dropped to zero. But yet, there's no, I mean, that was 400 and some PSI. You would think I'd be able to find a leak. Uh, or he, at least here, leak it dropped overnight. Uh, and uh, I'm going to bubble test this hose. This is a brand new hose. And um, and it's a yellow jacket. So you know it's no cheap hose. And for it to drop 400 some PSI to zero by the next morning, there's an issue. So let's find out if it's because it had a new seal in it. And the seal relaxed. When you have new hoses, this is one thing a lot of people don't know. When you buy new hoses and you have new seals on them, the new seal will wear out really fast. And it's not wear out. It'll give up some of its elasticity really quickly. And then it'll become a little compressed. And once it does that, it holds its compression and its elasticity. But when you get a brand new seal and you compress it down, it gives up some of its life and you might notice all of a sudden your hoses get loose again and that's because the seal has given up at some of its life some of its elasticity in the first few hours kind of like when you put on a fan belt and you tighten it up to say 30 inch pounds or whatever your measurement weight or your method of taking the fan belt tension and you use your tensioner you run the fan and you come back the next day and you feel it and it's really loose and sloppy because it's a, it's a rubber material and it'll stretch a little bit. The same thing goes with seals. When you have brand new hoses and brand new seals, they give up a little bit of their life. And um, I had these hoses in use for about a week and I've retightened them a few times and took them on and off. So I would figure it would have done its job. So I am going to uh, release this cap down here. That's close. There's, there's 400 and some PSI in it. Wow. Nope, I'm not going to release that cap right now. I'm going to have to uh, release the pressure off that cap because that little bit of 400 and some PSI in there. Will not let me remove it. There, now it comes off easily. That pressure against that would not let me... Um, Remove that cap, and you can see my silicone grease down in there. And no. Let's go back there. So I'm still zeroed. Everything's zeroed. There was a, one person who made a comment and had made a video, and it's actually on YouTube. Every time they turned their unit off and on, and they uh, re-zero out their unit, and they turned their unit off, and they turned it back on. Uh, it goes out of zero every time. But mine doesn't do that. So I'm putting this back on. And we're going to rerun. And I'm actually going to do a leak test. If this fails again on the zero time, I know now that it's uh, the hose. 
So what I'm going to do is I'll probably do a bubble test. Oh, ultrasonic leak test. That's what I'll probably do too. So I'll get my ultrasonic leak tester. I'll po power this, not power this. Uh, I'll pressurize this up with uh, 460 PSI of nit uh, nitrogen again. And I'm going to go along my hose at the ferrules here. And around the fittings where I have the seals in here. And then you'll see there's little gas. Let's see if our eye can catch, if, if I could see them anywhere. So the hoses will have little tiny dots. And sometimes the manufacturers make them big enough so your eye could see. And sometimes they don't. And that's what I'm trying to catch here in the light for you. And I don't see these too clearly. Let's see if I could see them on the black hose. No, I don't. Well, they're called, they're uh, relief. Well, they, they know that hoses sometimes leak internally because you have an inner lining. Then you have like a threaded material and you actually sometimes can see the threading of the material underneath. And then you have another jacket on top of that of a plastic material. And if you don't have an outgassing part where it will easily release the pressure, this will actually bubble up into a big bubble when it has a leak and it'll pop and it could pop violently. It could hit you in the face, it could hit you, you know, hit your hand, it stings like hell. I've had I had one uh, pop on me while my hand was on it before. And uh, if you have four or 600 PSI of pressure in one of these, when it pops, it hurts your ears too. It's quite a loud crack. Um, so the next thing is to determine why my brand new uh, yellow jacket hoses could not hold that 400 and some PSI. So I am open. I'm open here and let's reconnect the nitrogen and find out why like a 60 or $70 hose set is leaking. Okay, that's open and there we go. We got a nice good quantity of pressure there and uh, I'm going to go grab my ultrasonic leak detector. If I find something with the ultrasonic leak detector on this hose, I will be making another video. If I cannot find anything on this ultrasonic leak detector with the ultrasonic leak detector on this hose leaking, what I'll probably do is probably put a little squirt of vapor R22 in the system and then pressurize it with some nitrogen, pushing it in further at a higher pressure and come over it with my leak detector and try to determine why this failed the test the other day. That's it guys, I'll see you on the next video and unfortunately I will be deleting that really bad video that I took of uh, losing the low side because I was using my work camera instead of my phone, my work phone instead of my other phone that I only use for video only. It's my second backup if I ever need another phone. All right, see you guys.